Hello everybody and welcome back and this week has been a great week for Star Wars fans because JJ Abrams released the new teaser trailer for episode 7 and well I thought this would be a good opportunity to make something Star Wars related and here it is a Millennium Falcon and I know I'm not the first one doing this in Kerbal Space Program but I think mine has something up its sleeves that the others don't. Which is, of course, one of my specialties, an interior. And here we are, right out of the access way to the gun decks, oh, well, the, those uh, observation cupolas on the top and the bottom. And this is the main walkway. There we see an access hatch to an escape pod. Over here we have the walkway to the cockpit area and when we turn around we get to the commons room where of course Luke Skywalker learned how to fight a drone with a lightsaber while not seeing anything and also Chewbacca almost ripped out an arm of somebody playing that funny little holographic chess game. Another access to an escape pod and over here we have well, kind of the crew quarters, it's a small uh, crew transport uh, module that can hold up to four Kerbals. So let's take a walk back and head into the cockpit, shall we? There we go. And now we have to try to find the button to transfer. John Doe Kerman, well I could not find any Chewbacca Kerman, Han Solo Kerman or uh, Leia Kerman, but I found John Doe Kerman, which sounds a little bit like Lando Kerman, so well, what the heck, why not. And now let's try this baby out, shall we? And therefore I enabled some cheats, because it does not have a high enough thrust to weight ratio to lift it up in VTOL mode, there we go, three engines at the bottom, a little bit offset to counteract, well, that the center of mass is not really in the center of the craft. And then we have our main engines that fire and lift the Falcon up into the air. And soon there is a problem, because I've used a lot of wing parts to make the front of it and also the interior. And well, that had the effect. You see some cargo bays here. Of course, this is a smuggling ship, so it has to have some cargo bays. And you can see, yeah, it's kind of tilting around when there's an atmosphere. That's because the wing parts create some kind of lift that, well, does not really help and there are not really any control surfaces to counteract that. And the result is utter destruction. Fortunately that did not happen in the previous Star Wars films and probably maybe what will happen in the next trilogy, who knows? Maybe the Millennium Falcon dies at the end of episode 7 as kind of a dramatic end or cliffhanger. But we can head into space with this thing and see what it can do there without an atmosphere. So I tried to get to Minmus first because it's, well, one of the easier moons or planetary bodies to land on in Kerbal Space Program. So let's fire up those engines and reduce uh, our orbit, well, kill our orbit practically, because on Mimus you almost can use your EVA package to get down and back up into orbit if you time it correctly. There we already have our landing coordinates, so we turn around, some minor adjustments, and then we'll head back down. So, back to that teaser trailer, we saw once more a lot of Millennium Falcon action flying around through, I think those were exhausts of a dead Star Destroyer or something. You see now the landing lights active, so I can see where I'm landing. And a lot of action, some TIE Fighters, which are a little bit shinier than the old ones, I thought. Some new Stormtroopers, 
which makes me wonder what kind of remnant of the empire is still around after 30 years uh, after they have been defeated. But all those questions will be answered in December when episode 7 comes around. Let me think, uh, let me know what you think uh, in the comments about the teaser trailer and episode 7 in general. Who do you think uh, will be the main bad guy? Will it be that red lightsaber wielding dude or girl? Or will it be somebody entirely different? Maybe the real antagonist will be hidden from us up until the next episode? Who knows? A lot of questions uh, still open, but that's okay, because I don't want to get spoiled too much before that movie hits the theaters. And I'm really looking forward to it now, especially after that second teaser trailer. You know, the first one was okay, but the second one really hit the mark and uh, hit all the right spots, especially that big opening scene with the stranded Star Destroyer and the desert, that was some really cool footage. And we have landed and we did not crash and everything seems to work. So John Doe makes some kind of inspection, crashes into the cockpit and heads back up the ramp. Well, well the ladder in that case. So we get back up into orbit. So I thought, well, hmm, if I can can land this thing on Minmus with cheats enabled because with the fuel tanks that I have on board this thing has well about 800 meters uh, per second of delta V which is not very much to be honest but then again this is a fictional ship and in uh, the movies it has a hyperdrive and certain other funny stuff which is basically just something some writer thought up and would not work in real life anyway so i don't feel too bad about enabling infinite fuel for this stunt to happen so uh, since juno has well quite some higher gravity than minmus i can't really use uh, the vertical engines to slow my descent uh, sufficiently so i descent on the main engines as far as I can, then switch to the vertical end engines and then let it slowly descend to the surface of the red planet Duna. Landing lights already engaged and we're closing in on the surface of Duna and we, well, maybe have a look around or maybe get back up right again. There we go touching down and now we're wobbling around hmm why is that happening it should be stable but it isn't for some reason yeah maybe time acceleration helps no it doesn't so no the landing legs are, are fine as well what is going on yeah and then i realized it was the sas system with which was set to retrograde and of course as soon as you land the retrograde vector is somewhere else entirely and yeah the spaceship kind of wobbled around trying to find that vector but as soon as i disabled it everything stayed fine so we have to head back up into space and get into orbit because I want to show you the final piece of the puzzle. Uh, the escape pods, because if you look at the schematics or blueprints of the Millennium Falcon in some official guides or unofficial guides or whatever kind of guides, um, the, in them it is stated that on the sides of the Falcon there are escape pods and those are the two crew cabin uh, modules I have put there and they have the couplers which we will try out now and oh no 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 Ugh. Joey we're no longer home well sorry Han I destroyed your ship thanks for watching everybody see you next time goodbye